Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is Tired Mama Tries to Read. So um, I tried to make it Christmassy by putting lights up, but it was so bright through my window that then I had to put a cushion in front of my window and you still can't really see the light. So this bodes well for my Christmas video that I'm meant to be filming in a few days. Um, also, which bodes well, is that half of the books I ordered for the Christmas video have not come in at the library. And at least one of the books I've ordered to actually own hasn't come. So I've literally got like three books, which is a bit of a letdown. So Christmas video might not come on the 1st of December as originally planned. Um, so today, and I, I decided as well not to do a book, a weekly vlog yet, because I kind of am halfway through everything and that just seems a bit lame. So instead, I was very happy to be tagged by Shan of Shani Reads um, to do the art movement book tag. And her video is awesome, so I would definitely check that out. So, um, can't remember who originally started the tag, but Sean mentions it in her video, so I will find her link and I'll mention it down below, and I'm really sorry that I don't know who did it. Um, I've just been behind on everything. So, the first question or prompt is um, Baroque. Um, so, an extravagant book character or a character who lives an extravagant life. Now, they seem to have gone for a lot of non-fiction in these. I don't know how that happened, but um, who I chose in the end was... I chose a book, I don't know if you can see it because it's a very pale cover, but this is um, The Many Lives of Marilyn Monroe by Sarah Churchwell. So I, I love Marilyn and have well over a dozen books on her, all different sort of picture books and things like that. I'm not as enamoured of her in my 30s as I was in my 20s, but I still find her a very interesting character. Um, I find her mind very interesting, you know, she was... Um, she, you know, she's a very intelligent woman and she loved to read. Uh, one of my favourite pictures is a, the picture of her reading Ulysses. So, yeah, um, and Arthur Miller said that um, in his biography that she'd often just sort of read half of a book and he'd say, you know, why haven't you finished it? And she'd say, well, I've, I've pretty much got the idea. And he said, and she often would have. So she just sort of left it there. I kind of like that about her. So this is um, this is one of the biographies. It's by Sarah Churchwell. And it, it's sort of described as the most comprehensive biography of Marilyn to date. Um, she analyzes, an, 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 uh, that's a good start, <laughs> analyzes and destabilizes some of the more prominent works dedicated to the slippery subject. Churchwell's Marilyn is a complex, well rounded creature in the best sense, the human sense. And I've picked this book, but I'm actually looking at it, I'm not sure if this is one of the ones I've read. So I need to get into it just to double check. Um, but I know it's meant to be good, so that's one I've chosen for that. The next one is Impressionism, um, a book that's left a lasting impression on you. So I chose this book, Life After Birth by Kate Feigs. I think it's Feigs. And I read this when I think my little boy was about four months old and I was in desperate need of hearing a voice about parenthood that was negative. <laughs> because it... It does suck in the early months and I have to say I don't think I've ever been more depressed than I was in like the first three months of Idris's life and I know that sounds awful and I love him to bits he's like my universe but and I loved him then but it is just uh, yeah so if you've had a child I guess you know what I mean if you haven't had a child you'll um, maybe you'll think you'll be different which is exactly what I thought but I wasn't so um, yeah uh, this was a book, a, it was, a, it was a, a, a more intellectual examination of what it is like to be a mother, specifically what it is like to be a mother, because what I found was a lot of the weight was on me, even though I was in a very equal relationship. So that's an awesome book and I thoroughly recommend it. And if you've just got a friend who's had a baby, just buy it and read it and then you'll be an awesome friend. Um, expression, my chair is really wobbly. I think I've balanced very poorly on the, uh, on my wooden floor. Not that Stephen has made this floor uneven. No, no, no. Um, next one, expressionism, a very personal, specific, maybe unique outlook on the world. I chose Tori Amos's book, Piece by Piece. So um, I read this probably a decade ago now, and it's a really amazing book. It's about art, it's about life, it's about, well, it's a great deal of it is obviously about music. And even though, I mean, I love music, Tori Amos is probably one of my all-time favourite music people um everything about her is awesome 
Um, I, I don't know much about technicalities of music. I did used to play a few things up until I was about 12, but then it all just fell by the wayside. So it was really interesting to read this and actually enjoy it, but despite having no real musical knowledge. And she's just great, like everything she does. Her philosophy on life is kind of just the right level of kooky and realistic, you know? Um, if you've ever listened to her songs, you'll know what I mean. So I chose that one. I need to read it again, actually. Um, surrealism, a spin on, a book that's a spin on reality. Um, I'm gonna just refer to the, my last video where I talk about Leonora Carrington's The Hearing Trumpet, because that's probably the most surreal fiction I've ever read. And um, I think that's what I choose. I would have shown it to you if you haven't seen my last video, I would have held it up, but my dad took it because um, that's what he does. He comes around and he's like, have you filmed this yet? That's his new thing, have you filmed this? And if I say yes, he's like, gone. Uh, pointillism, different narratives making up a bigger picture. Easy peasy, um, Louise Erdrich. So I've mentioned her before. This is one of the later ones. I'm not in, in the North Dakota saga. Um, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seventh one, um, I think. The last report on the miracles at Little No Horse. And it's one of my favorites. I mean, they're all brilliant, but this is where she, for me, she really comes together and just, um, Characters that you're familiar with from the other novels all come in, but she just puts twists on them. So you, you've, you've got an expected view of a certain character and then in another novel, it's just completely blown apart. And I can't even give you hints as to what that is because it would just really ruin it. And I think I read someone say say once in maybe like a Guardian article or something that either, either she is amazing at thinking on her feet and coming up with these new ideas, or she really is one of the best planners when it comes to writing fiction. Because it's almost impossible to believe that she hasn't planned some of these twists from the start. And yet, I don't know, I, I, if so, I'd be interested to know, I suppose it doesn't really matter. You know, did she always foresee this character going in this direction? Or did she write that book and then think, Do you know what, I'm going to make them go like this? So yeah, she is brilliant and that is one of my favourites. And you can read that as a standalone novel. So all of them can be read as standalone novels. You don't have to think, oh God, I'm going to read seven, well, I think it's up to 10 books. You can just read them as standalones in any order you want. And they, it's just, if you read them in the published order, you get an idea of where Erdrich herself is trying to take it. Um, pop Art, um, a book that criticises consumerism in some way or looks critically at current times. This is my terrible handwriting, so I can't read it yet. So I haven't read this book, but it's been on my shelf for a million years and I need to, and that's No Logo by Naomi Klein. Um, so it's described as, um, she undertakes the arduous journey to the centre of a post-national planet. Starting with the brand's birth as a means of bringing soul to mass marketing, she follows in the logo's wake and, notices, and notes its increasing capacity for making products subservient. Beyond this, she reaches her core argument that I am an easy struggle between corporate power and anti-corporate activism via sweatshop labour, submerged identity and subversive action. Yeah, looks amazing. I mean, yeah, um, I think that counts as consumerism. So... I would love to read this, it does look dense, and it's kind of 10 years old now, but I think it would probably still be absolutely applicable. And I mean, the picture in the, in the front of a little child, never before have brands meant so much to me as they do this Christmas, because Idris is totally aware of um, things like Paw Patrol, Blaze, um, PJ Masks, he loves all that sort of stuff. and. You can't get him something similar. He's totally unfooled. So you can say, oh, that car looks like Blaze. And he'll be like, no. You know, we spent ages looking for this car called Darrington. And um, yeah, in, in the car, he's got a colouring book. And for some reason, the artist has drawn the character Darrington with two little buck teeth, which he doesn't have in the cartoon. And he was instantly like, that's not right. So brands are just so powerful. You know, we're going to spend a fortune this Christmas, like a pair of idiots, because of this impact upon our child and he's two so that's insane um Dardaism, a weird book or a book with a spin on the novel format so i've been wanting to talk about this book for ages and now's the perfect chance um i love dick by chris kraus a book that regularly causes hilarity when people spot it on my shelves and wonder what on earth it is um it's when i first read it i think i was about maybe even three quarters of the way through and i was thinking what is this book why am i bothering this is weird and then something just clicked and I got what she was doing and I loved it. And then I turned back to the start and started marking passages that I should have marked when I went through. So yeah, it's 
it's if you didn't know the story it's about Chris Krause an unsuccessful artist pushing 40 so it's sort of you know semi-autobiographical um, she spends an evening with a rogue academic named Dick and falls madly and inexplicably in love enlisting her husband in her haunted pursuit Dick proposes a kind of game between them but when he fails to answer their letter so they let her, she and her husband write together Chris continues alone, transforming an adolescent infatuation into a new form of philosophy. It's so hard to describe what it's doing until you read it, but it is exactly what it says. It's letters to Dick um, and the odd bits in between, sort of accounting her obsession and, and then in doing so, the way women are in the world, their position in the world. Even that doesn't seem to do it justice. It just, it talks about a lot. It's really good. I should maybe do a better video than that. I've been wanting to talk about that book for ages and now I can't actually describe it, which is good. Um, performance art, a book that would make a great movie or a, fav or a favorite play. Um, I chose a book that would make a great movie. I chose Diamond Star Halo by Tiffany Murray. So yes, this is an awesome book. And ev when I worked in the bookshop, I sold dozens of copies of this at full price, which is unheard of in bookshops to sell anything that isn't on a three for two because I had a personal recommend for it and everybody who bought it loved it. I had people coming back saying, have you got something similar to that? And there isn't really anything similar. Um, so it's growing up in a rural recording studio. Halo Llewellyn is rarely starstruck, but when a visiting singer gives birth to Fred, she knows right away that he's special. As the golden child grows into the gilded man, Halo remains disorient disorientingly dazzled by him. Up on stage, being screamed at by hundreds of teenage girls, Fred will still always turn his spotlight on Halo on the crowd. But that's the problem with falling in love with your charismatic or almost brother. It can never be a secret. And in the end, the whole world has to know. So Tiffany Murray is interesting because, does it say in here? Um, she grew up in... Oh, it doesn't say on the back. She grew up in um, a recording studio in Wales that was very famous and lots of famous people recorded their big albums there. I'm struggling to actually think of any now. Um, yeah, so when she was very small, Freddie Mercury wrote the title of, uh, wrote a little of Bohemian Rhapsody at her house. So she lives in this sort of rambling Welsh countryside with a big manor house and then there's a recording studio built on the land that inexplicably became the place where you went, you know, to record an album, I guess to be alone. And I vaguely remember somebody very famous and recent, who is it? Can't actually remember her name, but she was recording an album, she recorded an album there about five, oh, Iggy Azalea. She recorded an album there about five or six years ago and she said, um, I think she'd gotten in trouble with her record label because she was, or she, they perceived that she wasn't writing enough. And she said, I know what they do to you now when you do that. They send you to Wales. So there is, it's still there, it's still doing its stuff. And this is kind of this fictional version, but it's beautiful. And the passion is really quite sort of, it's, you know, it's a bit raunchy. Um, Owen Shears described it, as a, describes it as a beautiful pitch perfect harmony of Wuthering Heights and your favourite mixtape. I'd agree. Um, and then the last two bonus questions. One was a fiction book that discusses art and I just couldn't think of one. And because I've got a limited amount of time, I'd already really spent a long time picking these. So I'll have to come back to that one. And um, favourite artist or painting. Again, I should have grabbed these books before I came in the shed, but I didn't. Um, I do like art. Probably my two artists that I've got a lot of books on or some, some books on, I'm not going to say I've got lots. Um, I love Tracy Emin, who famously did The Bed. Um, which won, um, oh my God, the Tate Modern Prize. I think that's what it's called. I've suddenly forgotten now. Uh, so the bed was a messy bed. It was a, a, a sort of reenactment of a bedroom that she was in when she, the story behind it was that she lay in bed and looked out at her room, which was just strewn with um, dirty sheets, clothes, um, alcohol, um use condoms everything and she looked out and she thought I either stay in bed and die or I have to get up and get a glass of water I love stuff like that I love stuff with the story so I I really love Tracy Emin and everything she's done is pretty much everything after that I've really enjoyed I like her drawings I like her light installations that she does yes um then perhaps somewhat more traditionally I like Frida Kahlo 
very, very typical sort of things for a feminist -y sort of person to pick. Not original at all, but I love Frida Kahlo. Um, I didn't get to see her in London this year because it just didn't work out. But I did see a really good exhibition of her works in London about 10 years ago, and they just have stayed with me forever. So, yes, um, my phone cover, which I actually have, have I taken it off? Yes. Where have I put it? My phone, oh, here we go. My phone cover is Little Frida's. And that's the one where she's sharing her heart. I don't know if you can see. She's sharing her heart with another Frida. They've got intertwining hearts. So I do love her. That's it. And done. Um, hopefully I'll be back with some more Christmas stuff and some better lights. Um, I hope you're all having a lovely December. No, nope, November. <laughs> and um, who shall I tag? Let me think. I haven't thought of this. I'm going to tag Sean if he hasn't already been tagged. I know that um, Natalie's been tagged. Who else should I tag? I'm going <coughs> to. Oh, I should really have. <coughs> I'm going to tag Kate. <coughs> That's a good start. I've had the occurrences. And. I'll put some more people down below because I've completely gone blank. Okay, hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye!